In this chapter, we've been looking at arithmetic functions, which are functions whose domain is some subset of the integers, usually the natural numbers. We've looked at the Euler phi function, which counts the numbers relatively prime to n that are less than n, and we've looked at the Mobius function, which has the unusual definition that involves looking at the prime factorization of n. There are two more arithmetic functions that we're going to look at in this section. The first simply counts the number of divisors of n, and this is denoted d of n. Here are the first few values of it. Notice that if n is prime, then d of n is equal to 2. This follows from the definition of a prime number as a number having only 1 and p as its divisors. In fact, if we think about it further, we can see that d of p to the m is equal to m plus 1, since we can easily just list out all the divisors and see that they're m plus 1 of them. The second arithmetic function is the sum of divisors of n, which is denoted sigma of n. Since we already have the divisors listed, all we need to do is add them up to get the values of sigma of n. Also, since we've already explored the divisors of p to the m, we can write an expression for sigma of p to the m. Notice that this is a geometric sum. All the way back in chapter 1, we derived a formula for geometric sums that can be applied here to give us a closed form expression for sigma of p to the m. Having calculated these values for powers of primes, the next obvious step is to compute them for arbitrary integers. Theorem 6.3 gives us formulas for computing both d of n and sigma of n, given that we know its prime factorization. We will prove this statement by induction on the number of distinct prime factors of k. When k is equal to 1, we have the cases that we have just discussed. So now suppose that the theorem is true when there are k or fewer distinct prime factors, and suppose that n equals n prime times p sub k plus 1 to the a sub k plus 1, where n prime has k distinct prime factors and p sub k plus 1 does not divide n prime. We need to use this notation in order to be consistent with the notation provided in the statement of the theorem and we want to figure out what the prime divisors of this number n are. Suppose that d1, d2, up to dt are the divisors of n prime, and consider this chart of values. The divisors of n prime are written across the top of the chart, and the divisors of p sub k plus 1 to the a sub k plus 1 are written down the left column. Every divisor of n is listed exactly once in this chart. We can see this since every divisor of n will have some power of p sub k plus 1 in it, where that power might be 0, and whatever we are left with after factoring out the powers of p sub k plus 1 will be some divisor of n prime. As an explicit example, here's how the chart looks for n equals 90, where n prime equals 10, p equals 3, and a is equal to 2. If we pick an arbitrary divisor of 90, such as 15, we could break that number into a product of two terms, one of which divides n prime, or 10, and the other of which is a power of p, or 3. Once we do that, we can see that this term appears in the chart in the corresponding position. We can also go in the other direction and pick an arbitrary value in the chart and see that it comes from the product of two terms, one of which divides n prime and the other of which is a power of p. Now that we know this, we can see that there are d of n prime times a sub k plus 1 plus 1 divisors of n. And we can now use the inductive hypothesis to get the desired result. Similarly, we can add up all the values in the chart to compute sigma of n. Although this initially looks messy, notice that by factoring out the individual powers of p sub k plus 1, we get a consistent sum that could also be factored out. Notice that this sum is the sum of all the factors of n prime, so it can be represented as sigma of n prime. Then we can apply the inductive hypothesis and see that the result follows upon making the substitution. We can make a simple observation about these formulas by comparing them to the original formulas we got for powers of primes, to get the following corollary. All of the arithmetic functions we've seen so far are a special class of functions known as multiplicative functions. We will close with the definition of this and a statement of a theorem. Definition: An arithmetic function f of n is said to be a multiplicative function if f of m times n is equal to f of m times f of n whenever the GCD of m and n is 1. Theorem. Phi of n, d of n, sigma of n, and mu of n are multiplicative arithmetic functions. We won't prove this in the videos, but it just comes down to looking at the prime factorizations and remembering the condition that you must break the product into relatively prime pieces. Thank you for watching this video. I'm currently dabbling with the idea of creating more videos like these for my classes, and I welcome constructive comments that might help me make better videos in the future.